All right. Hello and good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation um, from the Client Enrichment Series. This one's titled Kahua Users Club. My name is James Patopoulos, and I am a regional account manager out of Region 6 in Kansas City. Before we begin, I want to let everyone know that we are recording today's session. We will post archived Client Enrichment Series videos on our YouTube channel where you can access more than 50 past sessions anytime, day or night. There is a link to our YouTube channel at the end of today's slide deck. We'd also like to make you aware of available GSA resources to assist you and your organization navigating through the current pandemic environment and safe return to physical workspaces. At the end of the deck are links to the GSA COVID-19 resources page and return facilities portal website. Both of these are linked directly from the homepage of gsa.gov. Today's presentation will be led by Valerie Pierre, Ashley White, and Susan Mills. A little bit about them. Valerie Pierre is a Project Information System Coordinator in the Office of Design and Construction. She leads the portfolio and training support teams for Kahua. Prior to working on the Kahua program, she supported multiple information systems and provided program management services for GSA, both as a federal employee and as a contractor. Ashley White is a National Systems Administrator for the SAS and T team. She joined GSA as a contractor in January of 2022. Prior to joining the contract, she has eight years of construction management experience as a general contractor as well as an ownership representative. Susan Mills is the project manager lead trainer for the Kahua Systems Administration support and training team. This team is responsible for Kahua training, implementation, support, and report writing for the system. I do have some housekeeping instructions for those attending. A live captioning is available for the session. We'll paste the link for it in the chat. You can use this link to operate a separate window to view the captions for side-by-side -side viewing with your Zoom window. We have automatically muted your audio to help us control the sound quality of the presentation. If you're new to using Zoom, welcome. We have found that the Zoom for government platform to be pretty intuitive and user-friendly. You can customize your view of different pods as you see fit. Speaking of, you'll see the chat pod as well as the Q&A area. For this session, please use the chat pod for any administrative questions you have to report, any issues you're experiencing, and one of our CES team members can assist you. Please do not use the raise hand function to ask a question during today's presentation. We want to keep all the dialogue in the Q&A pod. Any questions that we are unable to get to, the, to today will be noted and all questions will be answered and posted on our website at gsa.gov backslash CES. All right, looks like we've got a poll question for everyone to answer. We'll go ahead and launch that one. So have you taken Kahua training before? And we're not counting today. So yes, I've uh, I took the one on August 18th. Say hello, uh, say aloha to Kahua session. Yes, I watched the recording of the say hello aloha to the Kahua. I uh, visit the the website. No, this is my first time, first introduction to the tool. So go ahead and answer that. And if for some reason you can't see the poll questions, uh, depending on how Zoom is interacting with your system, you can also chat that as well. So let us know if this is the first time you've been to a Kahua training or if you've been to other ones in the chat. All right, we'll go ahead and share the results. It looks like 35% uh, said, yep, I was there on August 18th. And 39% said, nope, this is the first time. I've taken the, um, this is my first introduction to the tool. So great, we're glad glad to have you today. So we'll go ahead and close that, that poll out. All right, well, I'll go ahead and turn it over to our speakers today. Take it away. All right. Thank you, James. 
Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending the second Kahua training session. So what will we show you today? So first, we'll talk about last month's training session. Next, we'll discuss how you can get access to Kahua. Then I'll show you where you can get more information on Kahua. And then lastly, two members of our training team, who James uh, introduced, will take you through a demo of Kahua, um, some of the apps that were not covered in last month's session. Next slide. So what was covered in last month's training session? So on August 18th, we held a Say Aloha to Kahua training session. If you missed that session and you'd like to watch it, we posted the recording on YouTube, which you can access through the link in the slides. In that session, we covered things like logging in, navigation, and setting up your Kahua personal settings. Then we did a brief overview on some Kahua apps. So we covered RFIs, communications, daily reports, submittals, media manager, file manager, and dashboards and reports. In a few slides, I'll show you how to get, how you can get more in-depth training on the apps if you wanna attend those sessions. Next slide. So how do you get access to Kahua? So the first step is to go to the Kahua account request form and you can see the link in the slides. This is a smart sheet form um, where you'll fill in things like your contact information. So that's your first name, middle, initial, last name, email address, your agency name, and your phone number. Uh, then you'll fill in your project information. So these fields are really important uh, for us to help get you to the right place. So things that we need here, uh, the name of the GSA project manager, the project name, project location, so city and state. Um, and if the project manager has told you a Kahua project number, you can also put that in and it'll help us get you to the right project. Um, Tina's also, uh, once I'm done, Tina's going to put a link in the chat window for a quick reference guide or QRG, which will help walk you through uh, the information, filling out the information in the request form. Um, one other thing that you'll do on this sheet is read and accept the rules of behavior um, and then you'll click submit on the form and then we'll go ahead and start processing your account. So once we have received your request, we'll process it, and create your user account. Once that happens, you'll receive an email from Kahua. The email uh, will come from the email address called outbox at kahuafn.com and the subject line will read Kahua invitation. You'll follow the instructions in that email to finalize your account. After you're done finalizing your account, you're ready to log in. So you'll go to the Kahua page at launchkahuafn.com. Um, when you reach that page, you'll receive a pop-up message and you'll click launch in browser. And then you're in. So at this point, you'll be able to navigate to your project um, and then view the project information. When Susan does the demo in a few minutes, she's gonna take us through some of that navigation again to help you get situated in the, in the site. Okay, so where can you get more Kahua information? Our project management information system page on the gsa.gov uh, website includes a lot of information. Uh, so you can view instructions on how to download the Kahua app. And calendars. So like I mentioned before, if you're interested in getting uh, more in-depth training on any of the Kahua apps that you'll see in a little bit, you can attend a session on those apps. If you're interested in self-paced training, you can access our training videos. So these videos walk you through a particular task. So things like updating your profile settings or responding to an RFI. So these videos are intended to be short and give you just enough information to per, uh, perform a, per, a specific task. You can also find our QRGs or quick, quick reference guides uh, these are step-by-step -step guides that walk you through a particular task. Next up is the Client Enrichment Series webpage. Um, you can find a link to the site in these slides here. Um, so under the recent presentations heading, you can find the slides, Q&A, and video from the August 18th session. And then the slides, Q&A, and recording from today's session will be posted there as well. Next up for que questions and issues. If you're having trouble logging into Kahua or if you have 
questions about security or just navigation throughout the site, you can use the Kahua support and feedback form uh, to submit your issue to our support team. So this is a Google form. Uh, so if you don't have access to Google, you can always send an email to kahua support at gsa.gov with a description of your issue and your contact information, and we'll work to resolve your issue. And lastly, on future training, um, in January 2023, we'll host uh, Kahua refresher training as part of this Kahua, uh, client enrichment series. So you'll get more information on specific dates as we get closer to the end of the year. Next slide. All right, so now I'm going to turn it over to Susan and Ashley. Uh, who are going to show you some more Kahua apps. Thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep, we hear you. Wonderful. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Everybody see my screen okay? Yep, you're good. Okay, great. Um, welcome to training. Again, I'm Susan Mills, and I'm going to be working along with Ashley, and we're going to show you some different features of Kahua. Really excited to show you guys. I think you're going to love the platform. So when you log in, after you've received your account, the first thing you're going to see is the Getting Started page. And the Getting Started page is a great go-to for knowing where you're at, what re recent tasks have been assigned to you, if you've received any messages, any recent projects that you have, as well as tasks by app, and also a visual of any open tasks that show you within a timeline. Another place that's really great is if you ever need to get back to where the QRGs and the videos and everything are, you can always come to Getting Started and click the Help Center, and it takes you right to gsa.gov, and you can access those training materials there. On the left side is what we call the left navigation pane. This is where you're going to move around within Kahua, everything. This is kind of like your steering wheel over here. To open a project, you'll click Project Finder. And to open a project, you'll see that typically it starts at the GSA domain. That's like the overarching umbrella where all of the regions and the divisions and the service centers fall. And underneath all of those, you'll find your project. So to select the GSA partition, you would just go ahead under here, you'll see GSA, go ahead and click the arrow. You'll notice that it changed from GSA domain to GSA GSA. We'll talk about that in just a second. But I want to show you, under the GSA partition, you'll see all of the regions. And because I'm logged in as a customer account, I can only see the projects that I have access to. But if I want to quickly find a project, what I always do is I star my project. And let me show you what that means. If I click My Projects, you can see I have three projects underneath here. And I have stars by them. So when I get access to my project, I immediately go ahead and click the star. I can unclick it if I want to as well. But if I unclick it, it's removed from my projects. So I'm going to go back to my projects. I can also use the search feature here at the top that will allow me to go ahead and type the name of my project here. And you can see that I've got a star here, so I'm going to go ahead and star it. And if I go back to my project page, I can now see that item listed here. So that's a quick way to get there. I can also right click on Project Finder and say, display my project. That gives me a shortcut kind of gives me a little bit more of a smaller landscape to look at, but it's a great quick way to get back and forth to projects you're working in. And you can always close it by clicking the X. If you want to minimize this over here, you click the arrow to the left and you'll just get icons, which makes you, gives you a little bit more landscape. If you want to expand it, click the hamburger icon and it'll give you everything so you know where you are. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open my project. So to open my project, I'm just going to click the arrow to the right, and it shows up at the top. We always suggest that you make sure when you log in, you know, it's going to open back up to the last project you were working in. Always make sure that you're working in the correct project, just so you're not adding data to the wrong one. So I would look up here. On the left, we also have what's called the app launcher. 
And if I click the app launcher, it shows me all of the apps I have access to. Now this shows me all apps, but if I want to go ahead and look at document management, I can select document management and filter on down. Package submittals has an arrow because it's got two documents within it, package submittals or submittal packages and the submittal items that make up the package. Schedule management allows me to see the schedule in any task. If I want to open an item, I just simply go ahead and click the application I want to open, and it shows up on the left navigation. Now, I have several apps open. As I'm working through the day and I'm opening the apps, they'll stay here until I log out. If I want an application to always show up when I log in, once I open it, I can right-click and go ahead and put Show on Startup. That allows me to quickly go ahead and open, you know, have that app open so I can review the log. Dashboards, right now we have one customer dashboard. We'll be adding these as we go along. And these are visuals. You can see that we've got two overdue RFIs in this project. And this also breaks it down by date. I also have submittal items by status. 52 submittals in the project, and this shows me all of the open submittals. And if I come down to the bottom, I've got some design review comments that I can review as well. If I need to open this up to where I can see it a little bit better, it opens it up and takes me to the design review. In the search, um, this is one of my favorite features in Kahua, um, is the fact that you can search across all your projects or you can search in the current project and it goes across all the apps. So if you're looking for a particular submittal and you don't want to scroll through or you know that you've got a document in the system related to a particular topic, you can come in and put your information here. And let's say I just wanted to go ahead and look quickly. I have an RFI. If I wanted to put in hoist beam, It's going to return anything that is related to what I have in my search criteria. So it's a quick, 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 quick way to find any information that you're looking for. I can search across my messages and tasks because those are global. All my messages for all my projects will come into those two applications. Or I can search across File Manager, which Ashley is going to talk about in just a bit. Under my tasks. I am able to see any tasks that have been assigned to me. Typically, those are things like workflows. If somebody needs me to do a design review comment or review, I can, I'll receive a notification. If I have it set up to receive it in my email, I will receive it there also. I come in, I open the task, and I'll show you this in a second when we go through design review. And I can complete my task from that one screen. So it keeps me, it keeps me and my project team members on task and make sure everything is going well. As you can see, I have three, a three indicator, which means I have three tasks I have not yet taken care of. I also have 10 messages. So if I click the messages, I'll have messages come through. There'll be messages. People can send me things within the system. I can also send emails into my message inbox by sending a message to inbox at kahua.com. It comes right into Kahua, and that way I can attach it to various documents within a project. Now, up at the top right is what we call the profile settings. When you first start, you're just going to get that profile icon. If you click that icon, you'll see My Settings. My Settings allow you to set up a few things. You can tell it whether you want to copy inbound messages that include inbox at Kahua to your inbox, what we just talked about. So if I'm in Gmail and I receive a project-related document and I want to get that document in, into Kahua, I don't have to print it off and then upload it, I can actually email that document by using that email. It goes into my message box. I can then go ahead and either create a communications document or I can attach it to another document within Kahua. I can say send a copy of any received messages that what I get within Kahua to my um, regular email. I can also choose to note how I want to receive those notifications. So if I don't like receiving notifications during the day, I can uncheck immediately. And I can have a summary of those notifications sent to me daily or weekly. If I do weekly, I can choose the day and the time. Lots of options. 
You can also send a summary when you have no new messages or open tasks. Your time zone is based on the time zone of your computer, but if you need to change it for some reason, like you're traveling and it hasn't picked up, you can go ahead and change it here. You have your default language and also the regional time and date format. One thing I always suggest is go ahead and turn on the project number because by default in Kahoot, the project number is not turned on. So you gotta set that up. So click the slider bar, it will turn turquoise when it's on and you'll also get a Kahoot flower up here which lets you know that you have not saved the changes. The save button will populate and you'll be able to click the button you wanna save on each page that you make changes to. You can show your account details. As you can see, it tells me my name and the company I work for. And if you're using Google Drive, you can go ahead and turn that on. And it will. you can pull in information from Kahoot directly from your Google Drive. Under Profiles, it allows you to see your profile within the system. So if I click this, it's going to show me um, my prefix, name information, my company, and also the office I'm at. My email is my unique identifier. So if your email, if your name changes or your email changes somehow and you need to get that address, I'm gonna ask you to submit a support ticket and we'll take care of that for you. You'll definitely wanna update your telephone numbers. That way your project team can get in touch with you. And if you want, you can go ahead and put your picture there. You don't have to worry about password. That's all managed by your GSA password. And then you've got your signature. If by any chance you're working on a document within Kahua that needs a signature. Now we've got the DocuSign functionality that's coming out, but on some documents you would place your signature directly on the document. You can do that as well. You'd take a picture with your phone, upload it to your computer, attach it here, create a four digit pin, and then if the document asks you for a signature, you just input your four-digit PIN and it stamps your signature on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the X in the top right corner and close here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk a bit about punch list and observations and what you can do as a customer within the system. So I've got it open down here, but I do wanna show you really quickly how to find it. If I went to the app launcher on the left side and document management, or I could enter the name of the application up here at the top and it will filter and show me the app. I just click the app and it opens on the left side. When the app is open, it opens up the register view or the log view. And what that allows me to do is I can go ahead and see all of the records that are in the system. I'm gonna go ahead and click close here so you can see that. And to open a record, all I'm gonna do is click the record title and it opens to the right. On the bottom of the screen, let me see if I can move this, you've got three buttons. Now what I love about Kahua is Kahua is very consistent from app to app to app. So you're not having to learn a lot of different things on each app. You've got the same toolbars, you've got the same section navigator and across the bottom, you find consistent buttons. If I click the full page icon, I can see the form in full page mode. If I click the two vertical icons, it shows me the split screen of the log and the document to the right. If I click what I call the hamburger icon or the three horizontal bars, it gives me the full log. So I'm gonna go back right quick to the full screen so you can see this. Up at the top, when you open a document and read only, you get a toolbar, okay? You get the send button. Send allows you to go ahead if you want to send this punch list item to somebody else. You could send it, you know, to someone using their email in the to box, or if you've got somebody in the system that you want to send it to, I'm gonna send it to Ashley. If I wanted to CC and BC, CC, I could copy it to communications, put in a subject line. I can also put in a body and format the document, I mean the message the way I want to. And at the bottom, you'll notice that I have two different uh, attachments. One is the actual punch list item. When I'm, and I could upload additional information if I wanna send it, or I can add a Kahua document from another application. 
I'm going to go ahead and click Send. And Ashley will get a notification. She'll get a message here, and she'll also receive an email. Over to the right side, you have the Section Navigator, which allows you to quickly jump from section to section. So if it's a really big document, you don't want to scroll all the way through, Kahua addresses that by giving you these shortcuts. You've got the View button. The View button allows you to see the formatted documents. So if you want a formatted copy of the record, you can print it and you can see it here. You can scroll down and review all the information. You can click the Open in PDF, which will open in a different browser window, and you can download or print it from there. You've got a few buttons up here at the top. You can move to the next page. You can change your zoom on it. If you want to just go to 100%, you can do so. You can fit it to page, change the page width, select the text, and also search within the document. You have the ability to rotate if you want as well. To close this view, just click the X. This is the same across all of the documents. You want to see the history. You want to know what's happened on this document since the last time you looked at it. When you click History, you can look at it individually. Felicia created it on 824, and it shows me that she's added information here. If I look at the next one, it'll show me all the new information that she's added and anything that was previous. And if I click the lock button, the edit for lock, I can see all of the information that she's added since. So I can always see everything that's changed on the document. It's always there for anybody that has access to it. So punch list, again, you can view, you can send, and you can review. You can see that we've got media here at the bottom. If there were any attachments, they would be listed here. Shows me the approvers, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and close here. The next step I want to talk about is field observations. And field observations can be found right here under, you can see all apps. I can also see it in alphabetical order. I'm going to go ahead and click field observations. And it's going to open up the view for me with the log and if I have a document open. Now, one thing I want to show you here is you do have reports, and you can click reports here, and if you want to print a detailed report, you can do so. Reporting does take a few minutes because it's going in and it's compiling all the data. So what I like to suggest to everybody is if you want to run a report and there's a lot of information in, click the report. You can filter on anything you'd like to filter on, and then click View. And move on to the next app and continue working in the system. Come back a few minutes later and you're report will be there. So I'm going to go back to the form again. Another thing I want to show you is the ability to manipulate the views that you see. So you're seeing a lot of information here. You may not want to see everything. You may want to just limited data. You can go in and manage your own views. So as you can see, I'm looking at the default. There are also several others, all observations, any that are open, and any group by type. So we've got one item that's monitored right now. But if I want to go in and I want to create my own view, I click that Manage View, and it opens up the view that I'm looking at. It shows me, and I can change my view to look at it. I can say, okay, I want to base my new view on the default view. Anything in blue and checked are the columns that are currently selected. If I wanted to go in and change something, let's say that I didn't want to see the location, I don't need that, but I do want to see clearance and type. I can change, select those. I can go to the sort and choose how I want my report to be sorted. Most important thing here is scope, though, because right now when you create your own view, it defaults to everybody. You don't want everybody to see it, right? You really just want it to be a special view for you. So change the visibility to just me. You can set up indicators. If you've got something that's on a timeline, you want to make sure that the team is staying on top of it, you can create an indicator and give it color so it marks that, those records if they go over. You can set filters. If you're looking for filters, you could filter on a field and give it parameters. And you can also do grouping if you want to group by certain areas. Let's say you want to group by location. You could do that. 
Once you're done with that, you click Save As and then go ahead and give your view a name and click Save. Now, I can see my view here, but if Valerie or Tina or Ashley logged in, they wouldn't be able to see my view because my view is marked as only me. So I can see all the default views that were set up for everybody. So when I click the X, the system is going to default back to my view. And it shows just the columns that I picked. Okay. All right. So we've covered basic navigation, punch list, and field observations. What we're going to do now is show file manager. And I'm going to point and click, and Ashley is going to walk me through everything. So go ahead, Ashley. All right, perfect, Susan, thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we do have file manager already open, but let's go ahead and just look at the um, perfect. All right, so we are gonna actually start off here in the 4.695 construction docs. And really quickly, uh, file manager is pivotal in the design review process because um, the design review application actually uses file manager for the initial upload of documents. So this is what you're seeing here. All of the documents are uploaded for the design review process, um, even though we are in the uh, file manager application. So Susan, can you go up to these send file um, action item thank you so when the after the files have been uploaded the um, the project manager will receive a notification via um, email or um, Kahua notification stating that there that everything has been uploaded ready for the review and so um, the contractor or the AE would actually go ahead and um, fill out this uh, form and then send it off to the project manager. And then as you can see below, oh, sorry about that. But as you can see below, the documents have been um, automatically attached. All right, so once that, um, once that correspondence has been sent off to the project manager, they will receive a task or a message stating that they can go in and review. So let's go ahead and look at the Perfect. All right. So this is pretty much how they would, um, what they would receive. And um, Susan, if you don't mind clicking on the three dots so we can go through on how to actually mark up the documents once they are received. Okay. So although this is a design narrative, it would be the same concept if we had um, actual drawings. So if we click on the pencil icon, which is our markup icon, we will then um, display additional markup tools. All right. So we're going to utilize the text tool. Susan, can you go ahead and make a box for us? Just type in sample. Or, yeah, there we go. Thank you. All right, and so here we just have just a little sample of how we would utilize the text and if we wanted to enlarge the text or, you know, change the colors or anything like that, we would simply go ahead, click out of the box. There we go. All right, so it's it looks like all right not okay there we go there's our palette that's what we were looking for so at the bottom here we have our palette and so with our palette we're able to actually adjust the text size um, adjust the text color if we'd like to as you can see there and then once we've completed um, our design review we can go ahead and in the upper right hand corner we can select save because we always want to make sure our document, our information has been saved. And Susan, really quickly, can we go to the last icon on the far right, which is our comments, just so the viewers can see the comments section. So here's where you're able to view the comments, see whatever um, icons have been utilized, whether it's the text box or maybe the clouded version um, feature, whatever it is, you're able to see that information here below. And if for any reason you would rather um, not have this displayed, you can simply just go ahead and click back on. There we go. And it goes away. All right. So we can click out of this. 
Alrighty, so now we're back at our main screen and then if we wanted to go ahead and finish our recommendations, we can select a recommendation from the list below. All right. And then if we wanted to add any general comments, now these comments are for the general overall package, not necessarily for the page that we were just on. All right, and then um, if there's any references, like per perhaps maybe there's any documents or anything like that we wanted to, you know, upload in conjunction with this particular record, we can go ahead and do so. But other than that, once we've um, provided our uh, markups and our review status, we can go ahead and submit it. And that way the final reviewer would be able to receive the, um, the, uh, the last review of the documents. Thank you, Ashley. That was awesome. Um, and you'll notice that once I completed that task, it fell off of my task view. If I need to go back in and check and see any of my completed tasks, I can hit, click completed and it shows me everything I've taken care of. All right, Valerie, Tina, I'm going to turn it back over to you. We're finished with the presentation part. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, so now we'll turn it over to the audience and we'll see if anybody has any questions or comments or if there's any app that you'd like us to revisit uh, now that Susan has the, the screen open. Um, so just a reminder, we, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, RFIs, we have submittals, daily reports, punch lists, field observations, file manager, media manager, and design review. Um, if anybody in the audience has an app that they'd like to see, just go ahead and put it in the Q&A pod, and then we'll be able to do another quick walkthrough of that app. And if not, if you have any general questions about Kahua, um, about getting access to it or any security, okay. Um, Susan, there's a request in here for daily reports. Do you want to walk through that one? Sure. Okay, so as you can see, I have it open from where I was testing something earlier, but you would find apps and you would find your daily reports right here. Like I said, this is all alphabetical, so it makes life much easier to quickly find it. Daily reports are listed, so once I click the application on the left, I can see all the daily reports that are in the system. The same with um, all the other apps I showed you, you're just going to go ahead and click one of the records to open it up. And you can see the information here. And of course, you've got the same button, same view and history that you can see. Scrolling down, you can see who the author, work locations, who is on the distribution, author type, and I'll show you the portable view on that in just a second. Don't forget your section navigator, navigator over here. Uh, which is much easier to quickly, because this is a pretty big document, if you want to move down and you want to see incidents or visitors, you can click on any of these areas to get there. So this shows me all of the incidents, if there are any visitors located, the equipment on site, any materials, and then I've got my weather information. And at the bottom, any project documents that were uploaded and any references. Now, if I have a reference to open a reference, I'm just going to go ahead and select it. You'll see that I have several other um, opportunities I can view, I can mark up, or I can download any of the references that are on there. So if I click view, it's going to open up another window and it shows me the information. So as you can see here, I've got, it shows me my media and gives me all of the information here. Does anybody have any other questions about daily reports? All right, um, Susan, since you are the CPA expert, we have a question from Kelly Morrison in Region 1. Could you review how to save a CPA as a PDF or repeat if when we'll be able to send it to the customers? I do not have access to CPAs uh, with right. this particular login. Okay, so but do you want to just, I, just yeah, describe it? Um, you can, same thing, what, what I really love, like I said about Kahua, is the fact that it's real consistent all the way across. 
So with CPAs, and I'm just going to show you, you know, using, let's say, the punch list. With CPAs, you'll have that same toolbar at the very top, right? Your send view history. You're going to click view at the top. Now, you'll have a couple of drop downs in the CPA to choose from. You know, you've got the different tabs, so you can print each tab, um, at least tab one and tab two. And you can print those to PDF. That way you can either email them to the client or you can use the send functionality within Kahua. And what that does is it creates a PDF of the document for you. So you can see I've got the PDF right here. So, and when you send it, it's going to send that person the PDF of whatever you're sending them. Okay, and one other thing, Kelly. Sorry, go ahead, Susan. No, no, that's okay. I was just going to say that um, coming next month, we'll, we're going to host training on the DocuSign feature within the CPA. Um, so that means your customers, when you send them the CPA, they'll be able to sign the CPA using DocuSign uh, versus you having to download the document and email, uh, PDF it, and then email it to them. So. Um, look, keep your eye out for training on uh, the DocuSign feature next month. And we do offer CPA classes two once a month as well. Yep. Okay. Did we have any other apps that they wanted to see? Yes. Can you please go over how to change the view from default to self? So I think that is referring to the log views. Sure. Let me take you into RFIs. So just because we're all familiar with those. I'm going to open the RFI app. Okay, when I open the app, it automatically opens to the log view. So these show me, right now, it's showing my, me my view for open RFIs. It's going to remember the last view you looked at. Every time you go back to that app, it will open with the last view you had open. So if I want to change to default, I just click default. Any views that I want to switch around to, I just change it just by clicking the view title. Now, if you wanted to go and create a view, remember you're going to go ahead and let me do that because I did that a little bit quickly. You're going to click this manage view up at the top. Now, what you can do is you check the view, you just select the view over here on the left that you want to use as your template. That's the easiest way to do it. So if I'm on default, it shows me at the top in turquoise and with the checkboxes, any of the columns that are currently showing. Well, there may be things I don't want to see references. Okay, I don't want to see any of that information. I've got number, subject, status. I definitely want to see the prime responder, due date, author. I might want to come in here and see days outstanding. There could be, you know, and I just scroll down and I pick the things that I want. Once I've selected all my fields, I'm going to go to sort. Sort allows me to sort by column. Now you can sort a lot, um, you know, but you want to definitely choose the very first item. You want to choose whether it's ascending or descending. You've got, I changed mine to number ascending. And the second one says none, which means you're not filtering by anything else. But let's say you wanted to do um, number and then by author, you could do that. Again, the most important thing here is the scope, because if you leave it as everyone, then everybody, this is going to get, this library will get really full very quickly. So you want to change it to just me. If you need a group view, reach out to one of us and we'll create it, right? If you have a view that you need for your entire project, reach out to us and we'll make a group one for you. Indicators, again, allow you to choose whether you want, you know, the fields to show, well, a little red indicator or yellow indicator to show up if something is getting ready to come up and it needs to be taken care of, or if it's going to be overdue. And that's a great way to stay on top of those tasks. You can filter on things. Let's say you wanted to filter on a particular author. Well, you could come in here and say contains, does not contain, does not equal, etc. And then you can put in the name of the author that you want to use. And grouping. Grouping allows you to group by certain things. Let's say you wanted to group by author you could go ahead and do so. It makes it a little bit easier to see all if, you know, an entire group of RFIs are submitted by the AE or the GC, you can see who's submitting it. And once you're done, you click Save As, and you go ahead and give it a title, and then click Save. 
Once you save it, then you'll come back and you'll have that new view. Again, we do have reports that are created. If you click this button up here, it looks like a page with the page turned down. It will show you a ton of reports that we already have created as well. Detailed RFI report gives a lot of information. To run that, you can just click the title. On your filter, you can choose, okay, I want to, I want to filter this on dates because I want to have a date range, or I want to look at all the dates responded. And then when you do that, you can go ahead and click View, and it's going to run. And again, I, I do like to tell everybody, it's pulling a lot of data, so the, it's not an instantaneous report. It might take a, a minute. So I just always, once I click View, I go on to another app and do whatever I need to do and then come back and my report's ready. Hey, any other questions about views? All right. Are there any other apps that uh, people in the audience would like to see? We've got plenty of time to go through uh, additional apps or um, processes if you'd like to see them. Otherwise, I'll turn it back over to James. All right, James, it's all yours. All right, well, thanks for the today's presentation today. I, I think um, everybody had some good questions there in the Q&A, and um, I think we got to all the questions that were listed there. Um, we do have a couple of poll questions, and that might help us out um, for um, additional training needs. So we'll go ahead and do the, the first poll question there. So our uh, poll question here, as a result of this session, how much more likely are you to request access to use Kahua? So we'll give a uh, couple seconds there for those to um, to answer. And it looks like we've got we got about half of answered. So we'll go ahead and share the um, results. Uh, Sixty-seven percent likely, twenty-seven percent much more likely. So great. And we've got one more poll question. What areas of focus uh, would you find to be most valuable in future training sessions? So this is this will help us uh, today on a, on a future training of the system. So you can answer punch list, RFIs, daily reports, design reviews, field ob observations, or submittals. And we'll give a couple seconds for those to answer. And you can also respond in the chat as well if there's something on that list um, that you find valuable or maybe it didn't wasn't on our list and you'd like to have more information on. So we've got punch lists, RFIs, daily reports, design reviews, field office, or field observations and submittals. So if that um, is something that you're interested in, you can go ahead and chat that as well, or maybe something we didn't think of. So we'll go ahead and close out the poll and see what uh, the results are on this. All right, looks like uh, I think a pretty even spread across the board. 
So Valerie, I think they want training on all of it, all the okay. above. <laughs> and I also see some um, responses in the chat um, about CPA training. So we do have monthly um, monthly training on CPAs. Say participants, I should say, um, the training on CPA. So that's walking you through how to create a CPA. Um, so I will put a link in the chat window um, for how you, uh, so you can register for that class. So if you give me 10 seconds, I'll have that ready. And um, while Valerie's doing that, there's also a uh, session this was posted in the chat on November 17th, the Tour de CPA. That's for, uh, and that registration is open. So go ahead and click on that link that's in the chat. That's on uh, November 17th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. All right. Well, before I close this out, uh, Valerie, Susan, Ashley, do you have any parting words? We look forward to working with everybody. Yeah, thank you so much for attending today. Um, we look forward to getting your account requests and helping you get set up with your accounts as well. All right, well, I'll go ahead and close it out. First of all, I'd like to thank Valerie, Susan, and Ashley for a great presentation and thank everyone for attending today. Uh, we're glad you were able to join us. We'll post uh, the, you know, the written responses to the questions and comments that you posted in the Q&A panel as a, um, in a frequently asked questions document for future reference on our website at gsa.gov backslash CES. In closing, the goal of the Client Enrichment Series is to engage our audience in workplace topics that can contribute to your mission success and to your effective management of your real estate and workplace programs. Thank you again. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Thank you.